Hello again, it's me, the idiot, with the C6. I left yesterday feeling kind of happy, kind of chuffed. I thought, I've got it back together. You will know, because you've watched the videos, I assume, that I had it outside running for ages, at times at sort of 2,000, 2,500 RPM, at, for up to half an hour. This thing was so hot, the fans are in, the fans are out, and it behaved beautifully. Absolutely spot on, could not have been happier. So this morning, when I went to the car, because then I thought, well, I'll go back into work. I've neglected my business slightly. I need to go and do some work on some paying jobs. I'll go in on bank holiday Monday, because I'm responsible. I thought, I'll drive in quite happily in this, maybe give it a wash at some point, maybe at lunch, take it on a test drive, hook up the camera, go for a run, let's see how it's running. Um, and what actually happened is when I got to the car outside, I noticed I haven't put that grill back on properly. Uh, I notice a big puddle underneath it. You can see where this is going. It was coolant. Now, so it's not just cheap coolant, it's expensive coolant. A big puddle underneath it. Great. There was nothing yesterday, and it had ample opportunity. What happened? Well, I don't know. I checked the level. The level was absolutely fine. Right, okay. Bring it into work. I had to get tomato off the ramp, which meant taking loads of other stuff out and then putting the wheels on tomato and then driving Professor tomato out before back in the C6 on the ramp. And in doing that, I discovered my latest problem, which I have three days to sort. My latest problem is the water pump's leaking. Yay! So yes, basically, um, my automotive life is going to sh at the moment. Um, the water pump has started leaking. I think it's the original water pump. I don't think the car's ever had one. I mean, it does have a water pump. I don't think it's ever had a replacement water pump. There's no, nothing in the service history, but I don't have a complete service history for the car. I've got some stuff, and there's nothing in there to mention it. Thankfully, the water pump is driven by the drive belt, although to get the drive belt off of this car is about as hard as doing a timing belt on a normal car. So I've got to get the drive belt back off. And then I'm hoping that if I remove the boost pipe that I couldn't remove before and get my hand up the side of the engine, I might be able to remove the water, pu water pump, or coolant pump as it is now, there's no water in it, coolant pump in situ, possibly. Worst case scenario, I'll have to remove the air conditioning compressor and the alternator and go in around the side. And worse than that, I might have to remove loads of stuff at the top. Oh, it's leaking as well. I mean, you, you couldn't drive with this. It's drip, 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 drip. Honestly. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be happy. We're gonna be positive, aren't we? I mean, to be honest, a lot of people will go, oh, because French, or because it's a Citroen, or whatever. No, it isn't that. Yes, it's a C6, and yes, they're complex, and yes, it is a pain in the ass to work on. This is an absolute pig to work on. The labour times on these cars are going to be one of the things that kills them. It is a modern version of a DS or an SM. It's a pain. I think it's easier to work on a DS. SM, I don't know, because I've never actually done anything on it. But DS, definitely easier to work on a DS. This is an absolute, anything in this bit here is horrific. Anything goes wrong in there, it's going to be a ball ache. There's no easy jobs. I'm changing the oil, changing the oil filter. That might, but the air filter's not too bad. A header tank wasn't too bad. Okay, there's a couple of easy things, but for the majority, they're horrific. And now, I have to try and change this water pump, and I don't blame the car for that. Well, I do blame the car for that. No, I don't blame the car for that. It's not the fact it's a C6, it's not the fact that it's French, it's not the fact it's a Citroen, etc. It is a car of this kind of age, so you're talking 
noughties, 2000 and, well, 2000 onwards really, that kind of age, this kind of complexity, which would encompass um, 5 Series, E-Class, S-Class, Audi, whatever the posh Audi is, A8, A8, S8, stuff like that. It would have what Saabs did a V6 twin turbo diesel, if I remember rightly, that's going to be as hard as that. Volvos with a five cylinder inline diesel, Alfa Romeos with a five cylinder inline diesel, anything that's got a big engine crammed into the little bay because although that's not a huge engine, it fills that engine bay. That is a smaller engine bay than a car of this class back in the old days would have had. And that engine is covered in stuff. It has crap all over it, plastic stuff. It has resonators and chambers and pipes and hoses and valves and butterflies and more pipes and brackets and it's just, it's everywhere. It's not like you can't see the engine. Everyone's like, oh, they put a plastic cover over the top, modern cars, and you can't see the engine. You can't see it anyway. Like whenever you think your engine bay looks uh, a mess, remember that. You can't see anything. All you can see is a nappy on the top, a dipstick, some pipes that I made, and a big alloy pipe. And it's just hoses and sensors and stuff. And the air intakes, they're kind of like, I suppose you would call them plenums. Yeah, that was the plenums, yeah, after the butterfly. That is part of the rocker cover, I believe. It looks like it's part of the rocker covers, the inlet manifold and the air intakes are the same thing and they form part of the rocker cover on both banks, which is plastic, naturally. So you can't see the engine anyway. It's a mess of crap that I don't want in my life anymore, that engine, it really is. Um, I'm quite down on this at the moment, but I will persevere because I do still love this car and this is why, when you go back to my head-to-head -head test, C6 petrol versus C6 diesel, I don't know if you've watched that one yet, and I go, oh, I don't know which one would I go, petrol, 100% petrol, yeah, definitely, doesn't matter what, I don't care what diesel engine it is, just get the petrol, you won't find one, that's the problem, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's a pig, it's an absolute pig, this thing, the engine, you could say, oh, you know, complicated engine, French and everything, Things that aren't bolted to the engine, so things that go around the outside, engine mount brackets, air box, intake hoses, blah, blah, blah. They've all got PSA part numbers. Everything on the engine, hoses, pipes, fuel system, injectors, EGR stuff or something, no, not, not, not EGR stuff, but no, oil filler cap, lots of other bits and bobs that are actually on the engine. They've all got Ford part numbers. That engine is built in Essex. It's built in Dagenham. Is Dagenham in Essex? Whatever, it's built around there somewhere. Um, yeah, so it's not even that much of a French engine, to be honest with you. That is more Ford than it is French. It's just fitted into a French car. The only thing that is, in fairness to the C6, is complex and a pain in the ass with the C6, really, is the suspension. And I always go on, oh, the hydromatic suspension, it's not that bad, there's nothing wrong with it. No, obviously not. This thing's done 160 odd thousand miles, it still works. It's I think past the Picasso, someone is, is someone trying to steal past the Picasso. Hang on. Nobody is trying to steal past the Picasso because, in fairness, nobody will want to steal a Picasso. I think I could leave that out there with the keys in it and a sign on saying, do not nick, and nobody would take it. You have to say, do not nick, because then people will nick it. If you say, please take it, no one's going to take it. They're going to be like, well, that's obviously a trap. Anyway, uh, I can't remember what I was saying, probably something negative. Basically, I don't blame the C6 for being a complicated French car, or a complicated Citroen, but I do blame it for the complexity of the engine, and the age of the car, and all the stuff that's fitted to it, and the problems that gives. So, I now need to try and remove this sodding water pump, uh, coolant pump. Um, I've ordered one, I've had to go to Euro Car Parts, and normally I hate Euro Car Parts, but I've had to go there, and they are the only people who can get one for me for tomorrow, so tomorrow they have a chance to redeem themselves a small amount. Uh, I have to go there and get it, they won't deliver it because I haven't got an account with them, so I have to drive there and get it, whatever, I don't care. Um, I have a Picasso I can do it in, so that alarm is doing my nah. I I th it's either a transit van that someone's left the window open on, or it's a building. Either way, I just need to stop talking and try and take this water pump out. Otherwise, I'm taking a Picasso to France.
All right, well, all right, well, partial success, because I think... Yep, there we go. Oh, ow. I have a pulley, I think. Very slippy. Hard to know. There we go. A water pump pulley. Full of coolant that isn't water-based. So now the question is... Can I get the water pump out through here as well? I'm going to refer to Sod's Law and assume not. But you never know. I cannot see a single fixing. Not one. Oh, no, possibly one. <sighs> one water pump bolt out. And that was the one I could see. Oh, there's another one. Well, that one's actually... That's a bit easier to get to than the other one. Come on, on you go. Oh, that's two undone. I've got a 40% success rate so far. See, I did listen in maths. Right, I. it seems I was mistaken. I thought there were five bolts, but I've been back on the parts diagram. There are three holding the water pump in, so I've taken them all out. Um, the other two were for something else, which was sharing the same diagram. So in theory, the water pump should come out, but it won't because it's, it's sod's law, isn't it? Again. I mean, it's probably been in there a long time. That's not working. Bloody hell, that's, uh... Well, I think I've got all the bolts. I mean, I've either taken, unless I've taken bolts out of something else, which is entirely possible. But I've been quite, I have been quite careful with it. It's very easy to think you've got all the bolts and it, uh, it transpire that you haven't. Well, if it wasn't leaking before, it will be now. Because you can't even get to the edge of it. I'm actually unpressing the pulley from the end of it, I think. Oh, is that moving? It's starting to move, there we go. Oh, it is properly in there. I'm just going to stick my phone down and make sure I have undone all the bolts. One. There's a bolt in the hole still. I know that, but it is undone. Uh. Ow. Come on. Stop fighting. Trying to fix you. Ugh. Ugh. Oh my. Oh gee. Oh my god, that is that's toast. Ugh. Look how rusty, look. Rotten inside. Right, I have composed myself. Some time has passed. Here is the water pump in better detail. So this is what's come out. This is, as you can see, minging. Horrible. It is, uh, you can see under there, that bit there, that's where it's been leaking. So it's kind of like mounted upside down like this. Um, yeah, so it's in the side of the block, mounted upside down. So it's been going like this, and it's been dripping from under here and running down the side of the engine onto the floor. 
onto my road. Um, now, the new pump comes with a new seal. Well, it better do, because if it doesn't, I'm gonna get angry. And then it's just three bolts, bolt it back in, reverse of everything I've just done, and then put all the coolant back in and bleed all that in again. So that's... I don't wanna... No, no, don't say it, don't say it. No, it's, no, it's been a pain. It has been a complete pain, this. But if that's all there is, and I do manage to get the pump tomorrow, I can calm a little bit. It does mean that I only get a couple of days before I have to go and drive this thing to France with not a lot of testing. But um, yeah, it's, it's not a deal, but it's the way it is, isn't it? So yeah. Um, also, I'm gonna alter the way I was gonna do things. Uh, I'm going to try and get an oil filter tomorrow um, and uh, fit it. And I'll change the engine oil. Um, because although it's done, how many miles has it done? 5,000 since I changed it. Um, I don't think you can change diesel engine oil too much, to be honest. It's so disgusting. Um, and also, I wanted to a transmission oil change. I didn't realise I'd run out of gearbox, so I've only got a, like a litre of transmission oil left. So I'm going to have to buy some more of that. Hopefully I can find that tomorrow. Um, and then while it's on the ramp, I'll do that and I'll do the engine oil and everything like that. I'll then, I might as well, I'll in for a penny, in for a pound. I'm going to put the uh, under tray back on, which hasn't been fitted since I've got the car. Um, or was it? It was on very briefly. Uh, I can't remember. Was it fitted? I've got one. It was broken. I had to fix it, but... Uh, I can't remember if that was on here or if I've got that off another car. But, yeah. So I've got an under tray to go on. And so then, then it's just basically, I'm just going to go and get it really hot, drive the arse off it, uh, and keep my fingers crossed. Um, it's ironic that this is the car that I took to France last year in a kind of like a, not last resort, but as a kind of emergency. Um, and now... This year, I'm trying to go back to France, and having had time to prep this, I'm in a worse position than I was last year. But then, I suppose, how close was I to a breakdown? Uh, potentially very. So that's it, so that's gonna be its chance. I'm gonna go and try and get this water pump tomorrow, assuming that it comes in and everything. I've actually bought two. I bought another one, I've ordered one on eBay from a supplier who says they do next day delivery. Obviously, it's a bank holiday today, but um, yeah, I've, I've ordered one of those anyway. What's that? Hmm. Um, so worst case, that'll be Wednesday. That's like a sparrow hawk or something flying around up there, like killing birds. This is what they do, isn't it? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I can do. Um, the, uh, yeah, the water pump's out. I managed to do it all from the top. That's really good. I wasn't expecting that. There was actually two leaks. There was another one. The uh, bleed screw on the top of the radiator was weeping. And then, yeah, I'll just hook it all back up tomorrow. Uh, I'd love to see if I could get that low-level warning fitted um, before I went, but I, I don't know. I don't know. That basically involves... I need to find a plug. Uh, I don't know what I've got. I can raid one of those plugs off, but I need to find a plug that goes to it, take it over to the uh, fuse box, I think. Uh, well, no, is it to the ECU? I can't remember which way it goes. But yeah, you have to take it over there, and then you have to go in, like, wire it in, basically, go into the BSI on diag box on the you know the parts at the uh, diagnostics machine and switch on the low level function because at the moment it's deactivated because citron cheaped out so yeah um i need to do that <sighs> didn't do any of the things i needed to do today but yeah such is life so yes, I believe that is where we are now, and I will pick this up again tomorrow, hopefully, 
with a new water pump fitted or in the middle of fitting a new water pump. Fingers crossed. I'm going home. I realise that's an ongoing thing, but I am just, I'm going home. So there we have the C6's original, based, balanced precariously on Clement, on Clement's wheel. And here is the replacement, which I got this morning. ProFlow. Mmm. Beggars can't be choosers. So it looks correct. And the rubber seal is already fitted. A bit of Vaseline on that, I think, to make sure it doesn't get nicked. With a bit of luck, this one won't leak either. I'll do a proper um, bit of video in a minute, but today has been a pretty stressful day. I can't even joke about it. I've lost my sense of humour. Running again, it's now half past seven in the evening. Bit of cardboard underneath to see if it's leaking. I don't even look. That's not a puddle in the middle, that's a hole. Thank God. Uh, yeah. Nothing more to add really at the moment. It's, I've been on it all day. All day. I'll, uh, I'll explain in a minute. Unless it leaks again. If it leaks again, I will probably just push it outside and go home and that will be the end of the C6. So that's the time. And I'm out on a test drive to make sure it works. I could really do without it. I'll film a video tomorrow.